All right. So, yep. uh, yeah, just a little information about me. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, um, part of the Modernizer team, I have a blog. And I work for a company here uh, in Melbourne called Seek. So you may have heard of the Shadow DOM. You may have seen it in blog posts somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, if you, you've been using the Shadow DOM, uh, you're not aware of it. It's actually been in browsers but not enabled to developers for a very long time. Uh, it's part of the web component spec, uh, which is, has five parts. So Shadow DOM being one, you've got custom elements, you've got decorators, you've got the template tag, uh, and you also have uh, the method of in importing uh, components uh, into your website. And it's a pretty big deal. So what do I mean by you've used it before? So we'll have a look at this simple input, uh, and we'll open up the dev tools. And the important thing we have to do here is go to this awesome little cog which has lots of little options you can enable. And there's this checkbox here that says show the shadow DOM. And basically that then allows us to dig into the subtree of what makes up, uh, for this instance, an input element. And you notice that there's uh, this document fragment. So all shadow DOMs are just fragments of HTML. They're like a, a hidden subtree. And you expose that, and you can actually see that the input actually has extra markup that will never be exposed to the user. But for styling purposes, uh, you, can, uh, you can have more control as, as an author of a component by having like, this hidden subtree with all this structural markup. Uh, and you'll see it's got a bunch of inline styles, and it's got this interesting attribute, which I'll go into later, that's pseudo. Uh, and if I quickly just add an attribute to this, <coughs> uh, I've changed that to date. So date's got a lot of different uh, components to it. It's not just a simple input. And you'll see that the shadow DOM's updated, and there's a whole bunch of markup related uh, to that element that's all hidden away. Uh, and it just makes it easier for the user to implement it. Um, basically, yeah, that's a way to uh, peek under the hood uh, and then hide all the structural markup. Um, and it gives something simple to implement into your page. So in instance, you can do input type date, and you get all this functionality for free. Uh, so if we want to create our own Shadow DOM, at the moment, uh, it's only in Chrome stable. Uh, so the simple markup, I've just got a button here, and I've got some JavaScript. And we'll just jump to the next slide. I've got this helper method uh, to abstract away some of the, uh, the creating the shadow DOM, just so it's easier to see on the screen. Uh, all it does is it finds the prefix uh, for the shadow root, uh, which is WebKit shadow root in, uh, in Chrome. And then it just says, do it, does it exist? If it does, then return me the shadow root so I can start working with it. Otherwise, fall back to something else. So uh, here I'm going to reference to my button, I'm passing it in, and then I'm just slapping in some HTML uh, into the shadow root. And then you see there that if I inspect this, that uh, it's now got a shadow root in there, and it's the H1. And you may have noticed that it's actually blown away my content and replaced it all. Uh, so if you want to preserve that content and you want to use it inside the shadow DOM, They've got the, uh, the content tag. So what the content tag allows you to do is says, well, take that content and make it appear like it is in this position in the Shadow DOM. So I've got the same, the same markup, same button. But this time, if I go there, you can see now it's preserved that simple button text. Oops. Uh, and you'll notice that the content's in there. So it doesn't actually shift the simple button around. It, it sort of distributes the node like it appears in that spot in the Shadow DOM, which is interesting. Uh, and it's quite powerful. So rather than just taking all the content and putting it in one single location, you can actually use a select attribute on the content, if you can see just up there. And it allows you to do a CSS select, uh, a simple one, and you can target an element. So in the example here, I've got uh, the host element, which is just a div, and I've got two paragraphs, which says world and hello. And in my JavaScript, I create the shadow root. And in there, I uh, use a content tag, and I say, select hello, place it here, do a comma, select the world class, and place it here. So then in result, it just says hello world. But if we look at the actual markup, you notice that 
it's actually uh, the other way around, but my shadow DOM switched it around. Oops. Yep. So that's all good for doing markup. So eventually you want to get to the point where you'd be able to do rich styling, uh, like, like you have in a lot of the form elements or the HTML5 video. It's got a lot of structure and styling to it. Uh, so you can inject uh, a style tag. You can create your own pseudo elements, like that pseudo attribute I was talking about. Uh, they've introduced a new app rule called host, uh, which allows you to target outside of your shadow DOM for, for the element that's hosting your shadow DOM. And they've got this distributed pseudo element, which is interesting. It's a CSS selector that takes a CSS selector. Uh, so here we've got an example of just injecting some styles, uh, preserving the content. I'm putting in a H1, and I want to give the H1 red. And you see now it's picked up the red. And the good thing about uh, Shadow DOM is it's uh, completely encapsulated away from uh, the user's uh, DOM or the light DOM, they like to call it. Uh, so your styles won't affect uh, their markup, and their styles won't affect your markup. It won't bleed into your, into your Shadow DOM. So custom pseudo elements, which is really cool. So you may be used to using uh, like the prefix ones like Moz and WebKit for styling certain bits in like a video tag or inside a, uh, an input. What the Shadow DOM allows you to do is specify your own custom ones. Now, they need to begin with x dash, so there's no name conflicts. So you always have to do ash, uh, the x dash, and you have to do the double semicolon because it's a pseudo element. And all in the JavaScript we're here, we would just specify pseudo and then what the pseudo element is. So then that way, as myself as a component author, I could then say, well, I want to give hooks to users using my component to hook into my Shadow DOM and change the styles. So you can see now that's picked up red, and if I inspect that. You see it's actually picked up a pseudo element on the side here, and it's picked up the red. So it gives you like nice CSS hooks for your users of your components to hook into there and change the styles from your generic um, ones you've provided. Now the host element uh, is interesting. So uh, if you're creating a component, you might want to uh, change the initial style of the element that they're putting it inside. So host allows you to reach out of your shadow DOM and then target that button. So in, in my instance here, I've got a button. And inside that is the Shadow DOM. But I want to affect the styles of the button outside of my Shadow DOM when my, uh, when my custom stuff is inside it. So we can use host uh, and host. And you can target any element, but I only want to affect uh, buttons that have my shadow written there. So you could easily do star or div or paragraph or whatever. Uh, and then so I'm injecting the style in here in the content. I'm preserving the content for the button, and I'm putting that H1 in there as well. And so now it picks up the initial styles that I supplied inside my Shadow DOM. If you look at the inspect, the actual button's picked it up, and it's got my styles that are in there. Now, distributed. Uh, so there's an interesting concept of when you want to preserve content from uh, the host element. So if you jump to the markup here, this host element uh, has got two H1s. And so if I want to shift around or only show one of them, uh, there's no way for me inside the Shadow DOM to go, hey, I want to give this H1 this style. Because what it's doing is it's distributing the node into the Shadow DOM through the content tag, but it doesn't actually exist in my Shadow DOM. So I can't just say H1 red, because I won't pick it up, because it's not actually there. So they've introduced the concept of uh, distributed, which is prefix under WebKit, but obviously other browsers will have other prefixes. And it takes an argument uh, of a CSS selector, in my case, a H1. So that way I can then say, hey, all the distributed nodes that are H1s pick up this style. And then JS, which is it's just injecting a style, um, preserving the second element, and just blowing away the first one. Inspect that, and then you see now it's picked up the distributed style. Uh, at the moment, this is only in Chrome Canary. It's not in Chrome Stable. And there's a few bugs at the moment with it. 
But in theory, the, the idea is that this can only happen inside your shadow DOM and people can't affect it outside of just a shadow DOM. Uh, so this is all four together. So the markup is really simple here. I've just got a slider and I've just got a bunch of images in there. And in my JavaScript, I've got a whole bunch of styles. And I've got a template. And I've got this complex structure here. And you can see I'm actually using a bit more advanced CSS selectors to distribute each image um, into its right spot. So I'm saying the first image, put it here. Second image, put it here. Third image, put it there. Um, and then I've got a bunch of controls here with uh, some pseudo elements. So you can target those and style them uh, as you see fit. And then so you can see here I'm using the, the pseudo element that I've done, the custom one. This is just a friendly look at the styles that I'm injecting to the Shadow DOM. So then the result is a slider is a simple bunch of images. And then we've got the Shadow DOM here, which is a more advanced structure. So I've got a style. I've got a H1. I've got my slides, which have a div around them. And inside them is the image. And they've been distributed. So I need to use that WebKit distributed style to say, hey, I want to I want to apply some initial styles to my distributed elements that I don't know what's going to be in there. It's up to the user to supply them. Uh, so when, when can you use it? So if, if you're writing a Chrome plugin, you could use it today if you wanted to. Um, the, the developers of the, the spec uh, have written a polyfill that works in modern browsers, so it relies on uh, ES5 capable browsers, so uh, IE10 and up, and all the other common stable releases. Uh, I've only scratched the surface. There's a lot of complexity in the Shadow DOM, and I haven't covered everything. So I highly recommend you check out these three articles. They're on the, the HTML5 Rocks blog, and they're really, really good. They go into concepts of like having multiple uh, Shadow DOMs inside another Shadow DOM, and, and get really, really complex. That's it. Thank you.